Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. Science Max! This episode of Science Max is all about building things strong. Two. And let's do three. An arched bridge, giant house of cards, magical stacking books, and more. Oh, I thought they were going to do it. All on this episode of Science Max Experiments at Large. Oh, hello, Science Maximites. We've got a lot of work today, so I was just getting prepared. You know, taking something flimsy and making it strong, that's what scientists and engineers do every day. And it's also pretty fun. You take something that's not that strong, and by the way you build it or put it together or change its shape, it suddenly becomes a lot stronger than you think it was. So I thought that's what we should do today on Science Max Experiments at Large. We should build something. So we're going to build an arched bridge, and we're going to build it out of sugar cubes. <laughs> so here's what you need. You need some sugar cubes, you need some sandpaper, and you need some modeling clay. So first, you want to make some abutments out of your modeling clay. What is an abutment, you ask? It is this. They distribute the force laterally from one side or the other. I like to use this. This is half a roll of duct tape. And so it fits in just like that. And you see, it's a perfect arch. If you just take sugar cubes and you try to stack them into an arch, it's not going to work because the sugar cubes may not even fit all together. And you can see only the bottoms are touching. I take up the guide and it all falls apart. So here's what you do. You take your sandpaper and you change the squares into trapezoids. And you start sanding down your sugar cubes into trapezoids. Basically, you want one small side and one long side. Thin at the top, wide at the bottom. Or wide at the top, thin at the bottom. It's a trapezoid no matter which way you hold it. Put it on the bridge and see. And as you go, you will see if you're doing it right, there will be no gaps. If you go to the Science Max website, there will be a guide that you can use to help you make the sugar cube bridge. So you don't have to spend as long as I did making this one. And then the most important part is the keystone. That's the one that fits in right at the top, just like that. And when it does, you can take away the guide and it stays up. Isn't that cool? It stays up without any glue, without any mortar, all based on the shape of these sugar cubes. The cool thing is, it'll hold the weight of a whole car, provided you have a very, very small car. The reason why it works is because the weight is distributed along the arch into the abutments and down into the ground. That's what makes an arch bridge so strong. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to max out an arch bridge. So I think I'm going to need some help, though. Uh, maybe Sonia from the Ontario Science Centre. She really knows her stuff. Um, yeah, I'll go there and I'll see if she's busy. All right, come on, let's go. Sonia. Hey, Phil, how's it going? It's going good. I was wondering if you could give me a hand with something. Okay, what's I'm, up? I'm building, um, well, it's actually, it's easier if I show you. All right. Do you mind coming back to Science Max headquarters? We can take the portal. But that thing doesn't always work. Oh, it is fine. Well, I mean, that worked just fine. Uh-oh, it usually makes a beeping when I do, oh. It's out of batteries. Oh, I told myself, Phil, charge the, charge the remote before you leave the lab, and then I... Where have you been? The, 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 the remote ran out of battery, so I had to run the last three kilometers. Sorry. You I made it. Long story. So the sugar cube bridge. You had a chance to look at it, right? Uh -huh. This works on any scale, right? Mm -hmm. It should, any no matter scale. what size arch, it should be the same, right? Definitely. Good, because what I want to do 
is use these abutments, but go to these abutments. Oh. So we're gonna start the bridge here, and I've already created a thing that to we can use to put the, support? the sugar cubes on as we go up so that we can make sure that it becomes now, a perfect arch. Yeah. Do we have enough sugar for this? Yep. I got tons of sugar. Whoa. Yeah. So I think we're gonna need some glue because it's gonna be really hard to get these to stay. Yep. To stay, stay right on. there without a little bit of glue. We're gonna make a giant arch, maybe some walls, and, and we'll see what happens. Let's do it. Oops, uh, an egg. Now you might think of eggs as kind of flimsy and they do break pretty easily, but eggs are, whoa, whoa. eggs are actually stronger than you think. It's because they're, well, egg shaped. You see, the top of the egg is like a little bit of an arch and the bottom of the egg is also like an arch and arches distribute the weight just like they do in a bridge. Here's how you can experiment with how strong eggs are. First, you wanna get a pair of gloves to protect your hands from the shell just in case anything goes wrong. You should also tell an adult that you're doing this experiment because if it does go wrong, you're gonna have some mess to explain. And also, you should probably put on some safety glasses. Now here's what you do. Take your egg and carefully put it in your palm just like that. And put it against your other palm and you're gonna push in directly on either side of the egg. Start pushing harder and harder. You can even lace your fingers and press even harder. And if you do it right, the egg won't break. Pretty amazing, right? So just how much weight does an egg hold? Can one egg support my entire weight? Let's find out. I'm gonna lift my weight up like this and lower myself down. And no, cannot hold my weight. Can my weight be supported by two eggs? Oh, nope. Phil's weight, four eggs. <laughs> Oh, I thought they were gonna do it. Nope. My weight on eight eggs. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> My weight can be supported by just eight eggs. Science! <laughs> Ooh, careful. Sonia and I are on a quest to make a maxed out sugar cube bridge. The reason why an arch works is because the weight or the load of whatever's on top of the bridge is carried outward along the curve of the arch to the abutments at each end, which carry the load and keep the ends of the bridge from spreading out. No matter what you build your bridge out of, sugar or stone, the science stays the same. Sonia and I are building a much larger bridge out of sugar cubes. We're using glue to help the sugar cubes stay together, just like stone bridges use mortar. And when we're finished, it was pretty impressive. A massive sugar cube bridge, yep. right? High fives for that. The moment of truth comes when we take out the support Ooh. and... Yeah! Yes. It awesome. works! Okay. Nice. Giant sugar cube bridge. So do you think it'll hold some weight? I think it definitely should, because right now we have an arch, mm -hmm. perfect arch, and the weight is being distributed to the sides of the base, so. So that's what it's for, right? It's, we can put weight on there? We can definitely put some weight. One to start? Let's start off with one. Okay. And let's see how it goes. All right. Here we go. All right. Yeah, one book, yeah. All right, Sugar Cube Bridge. One book. Two books. Are you nervous? Yeah! <laughs> sugar, books. Sugar Cube Bridge, three books. Three books. Oh, that was great. It, it held up three books. Three. Well, technically it held up two books and broke on the third. So it's kind of still far from how much weight we want to hold because we want to cross it. We definitely want to cross it, so that means we need something bigger and stronger. The cube yeah, works. You're right, because the cubes are great because that keeps the science the same. Yeah. Right? So 
something cubular. The milk crate, really? Definitely, I think we should use those. It's a cube. It is a cube. A whole bunch of milk crates and we'll see what we can do. I think that sounds great. Awesome. This is a Prince Rupert's drop. It's a piece of glass that has a long snaky tail and a bulb at one end. So what's so interesting about a glass tadpole? Well, I'll show you. And remember, this is just glass. Oh, Prince Rupert's drops are very strong. Almost as strong as steel. It's all in how they're made. Molten glass is dropped into cold water. What happens is the outer part of the drop cools off first, leaving the inner part still hot. When the inner part eventually cools, it contracts, pulling everything in tighter and tighter, keeping it under a lot of tension. And because it's round, the force you put on it is distributed all the way around, just like the force is distributed on an arched bridge. Until you get to the tail. Just the tiniest break in the tail, and it explodes. All that energy is released in a chain reaction. Why it's so strong you can hammer on one end, but explodes when you break the other, puzzled scientists for centuries. But now we know it's all in how it's made. The Wizard Academy. All you have to do is demonstrate true magic and you will be granted entry. Send in the next applicant. <laughs> okay, don't let them see you, don't let them see you. Okay, magic smoke, and here we go, big entrance. Behold it is I, overwhelm all. You again. I only have to demonstrate magic one time and you have to let me into the Wizard Academy. And last, last time does not count. So prepare for your mind to be boggled and your eyes to also be boggled because I shall do a trick. I will just get to it. Here is a book, behold! And now, feast your stupefaction as I produce another book, ha ha! And then, two or three more times, behold, as I put, as I, that's good, behold! And now, look upon the wonderment as I stack these books on top of each other, like this. And now, feast more stupefaction as I, I cleverly move the books off the table. And now, now comes the magic word. Now, I say the magic word. The magic word! And behold, the book is levitating. It is completely off the table. I have done it. Magic. No. No? Not magic, that's science. But the book is levitating. No. Look at it, it's not even touching the table. No, it's being supported by the books below because of the center of mass. Preposterous. I'm afraid it's very posterous. Each book is balanced on the one below in a way that the center of mass is behind the edge of the book below. And the entire stack center of mass is behind the edge of the table. So it may look like magic, but it's science. So... I can't get into the Wizard Academy? No, I'm afraid not. I, uh, good... Alakazam! You will rule the day that Overwhelmo did not I will return, and then you will see. Oh, ow. Sonia and I made a large bridge out of sugar cubes, and it didn't hold much weight. So now we're going to try making another arch bridge, but instead of sugar cubes, we're going to use milk crates. There we go. I've made some abutments out of giant crates, and this is where we're going to start our bridge, and they start there, and it goes in a big arch, but we're going to be using. I brought milk crates. Milk crates, high fives, Woo! high fives. So we start our bridge. This is a straight line, it's not, a, it's not an arch. It's not an arch. But it's clear we have a problem. Okay, ready? Ah! That didn't work, Phil. <laughs> we're like, it's like we're back to the beginning again. So this is like two straight lines. Yeah, two it's, straight lines, it's yep. Like a triangle. We need an arch, so we're gonna need a support. Sonia and I build a support to help us make a curve the milk crates can follow. 
But after we finish stacking, there's a problem. That doesn't look very solid. Yeah, it doesn't, does it? Here. Oh, yeah. Because everything is, there's a gap at the top of all of them. Look, that one, there's a gap. There's a That's gap there. There's a big there's a one gap here. It's well, not I mean, making our bridge very solid. There's only one way to find out for sure. You can try it. Is to pull this out and see if it stands up. Let's do it. OK. So, didn't stay up. Didn't stay up. OK. That's all right, though. I'm not sure why it isn't staying up. Like, the sugar cubes were cubes. Mm -hmm, that's a cube. Milk crates are cubes. But we did change the shape of the cube. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you remember, when I first built my sugar cube bridge, it didn't work with cubes. You have to sand the cubes down to make them into trapezoids. You can't build a perfect arch out of cubes. So they were tall, wider here, and then narrower there so that they had... Oh, so that's the problem. Yep. So I could, like, cut it? I could cut it. I could cut it. You could. I could cut it. That's take a long time, though. If we cut the milk crates into trapezoids, everything will work, right? Right? We take a milk crate, and with the right safety gear, we cut it so we can reshape it into a trapezoid. Good. And it works, but... It's gonna take a long time, isn't it? Definitely. So uh. how about this? I have an idea. So remember when we did the experiments and we had lots of V gaps? Yeah. How about we put some wooden wedges into those gaps to make it one secure structure? So they, it was sitting like this. Exactly. So what we're gonna do is insert wooden pieces right here so we'll fill those gaps. I and get it. And we'll make it one secure structure. Ah, okay. instead of cutting all of our milk crates, we can keep the milk crates. Yep. And they can be solid and we just add to it rather than take Taken away. Taken away, exactly. That is a smart idea. Okay, so let's make some wedges. All right. Oh, hey, how you doing? Let me guess, you want to build a strong structure, something that'll stand the test of time. Well, you know you got to use the right kind of shapes. Look at this, a square. Now, squares have got to be strong, right? Well, maybe. Maybe if you press straight down on it, but watch as I push to the side. Oh, no! The thing that I have built is now collapsing because squares aren't, in fact, strong after all. If only I had listened to Sal's sage advice. Yeah. Squares aren't gonna cut it. Fortunately, there's a shape that's strong in all kinds of ways. A triangle. Okay, so you heard of triangles before, good for you. But look at this. You can push down from the top and it doesn't move, or you can push from the side and it doesn't move. Triangles are awfully pointy. How do I build with them? Observe, ha <laughs> ha. Triangle here, triangle there, platform on top. And watch. <clears throat> No matter how I try to shift it, it stays solid. And check this out. Triangle here, second triangle there, and a third triangle shape here. That's like three triangles for the price of two. Huh? That's a good deal. So there you have it. The triangle. One of the greatest shapes to build with. This is a house of cards, and if you've never built a house of cards, you should definitely try. Try, because it's not easy. What you need to do is you need to make triangles with the cards. If you do it just right, ha ha, they'll stay up. Then you take another pair of cards, like that, you take another card and you put it on top. Ah, and it stays up. Keep on building by making triangles and putting another card across the top like a roof. Then, when you're ready, you can start to make a second layer. It takes a lot of patience to make a house of cards. But with enough patience and really steady hands, you might be able to finish it. There we go. Ha ha, a house of cards. Now, let's max it out. Shh, backing away slowly, backing away slowly. To build our maxed out card house, the Science Max build team and I used large pieces of foam insulation which were super light and easy to work with. Once we set up the first layer, we needed to bring in a scissor lift so we could keep building the next layers. By the time we got to the top, our card house was 10 meters tall. Yeah, giant house of cards. And now that I've built a giant house of cards, what do I do with it? I knock it down. I'm 
gonna build it again. Sonya and I are rebuilding our milk crate bridge. Since cubes don't work if you're trying to make an arch and changing the shape of each milk crate would take too long, we're using wooden wedges to fill the gaps at the top of the milk crates. Once we get the wedges in, the milk crates have support at their tops and they make a perfect arch. Are you ready? I'm ready. All we have to do is pull the wooden thing out and if it holds up on its own, we've done it. We pull out the support and it stands. It works. The bridge supports itself. Now it's time for the final test. We try to walk on this bridge. So we spent some time making sure our bridge was safe. We added a crash mat and we built a second arch. We sure did. So that it's a little bit wider and it feels very solid. So the only thing to do now is to test it. Test it out. You gonna do it? I absolutely will. All right. Absolutely. Sonia puts on a helmet and gives it a try. And sure enough, it works. Yeah! yeah! Milk Crate Bridge! 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 Woohoohoohoo! Science Max experiments at large. Milk Crate Bridge! Yeah! yeah. For science! High five! High five! High five! Oh, there, not going great so far. Mm -mm. Behold! <sighs> Beginning steps. Mm -mm. I see a problem. Look, I can spin it on my finger. Ow! I was wondering if I could ask you a question. Yeah, go ahead. What? your hair like that? Well, you, you don't like my hair? Well, it's okay, but you know, what if you parted it to the other side? Huh, never thought about that. Maybe that, maybe I should try that. Well, I'd say, Henry, that bridge is sure sugary. 